everybody. Today we're going to talk about something that I always teach in kindergarten. And I'm sure some of you that are in kindergarten may remember it. This may be your first time, but all of you that are in upper grade should remember. The first thing I want to talk to you about is lines. And when we talk about lines, the first line we always talk about is a horizontal line. Say horizontal. Nice job. We know that a horizontal line goes from side to side and it's perfectly straight. We also talk about diagonal lines and vertical lines. Behind me, you see I have vertical lines. Next to me, you see that I have horizontal lines on the tractor radiator. Think about where you can see horizontal, vertical, or diagonal lines in your house. Take pictures of them and post them to me. Let's see how many lines you can find. So talking about horizontal lines again, horizontal comes from the word horizon. And in kindergarten, we also talk about horizon line in an artwork. And we also do this where the sky meets the land, that's the horizon line. Do it again. Where the sky meets the land, that's the horizon line. Your horizon line can be in the middle of your art, up above, higher in your art, or down low in your art. It doesn't matter where your horizon line is. Your horizon line can be bumpy from hills, it can be jagged from mountains, and it can be really deep. So think about that as we go on about lines today. We're going to work on an anchor chart with lines with some sketch noting. So follow along, get a piece of paper and a pen if you would like, or a pencil or a crayon or a marker, whatever you can do, or multiple pieces of paper. We're gonna do some drawing and talking. And remember, after this, I'm gonna have you take a, maybe a cell phone or a camera or an iPad and take pictures of all different kinds of lines, label them and send them to me. Hang on, here we go. As I said, we're gonna have a piece of paper, which in my classroom we call an anchor chart. And we also talk a lot in my classroom about sketch noting. So we're gonna combine the two today. So I have a giant piece of paper so that you can see what I'm doing and I'll zoom in on some of the drawings so that you can see them, but you can just have any piece of paper or a chalkboard or a wipe off board, whatever you have. Thank you. The first thing that we're gonna do is decide what paper we're gonna use. And I'm gonna lay my paper right here on this ottoman. And I'm kinda using that as a desk these days. But you're going to see that the first thing I'm going to do is decide how do I want this anchor chart to go. A lot of times we do mind mapping with our sketch noting and things like that where we put our main idea in the middle and we branch out from it. We're going to have a lot of different kinds of lines today and it might get a little confusing so I'm going to start today by putting the title and the main idea for my anchor chart and sketch noting up here. So I'm going to call the top of my page lines. And we're going to talk about all the different kinds of lines. We know from art class that there are basically two kinds of lines. One line is straight. And the other kind of line is curved. And we have lots of people say, only two kinds of lines? What about circles? I always say, that's just a continuation of a curved line. Some people say, well, what about a mountain or a triangle? Those are just combinations of straight lines. So when we talk about our lines, we know that the first thing we always talk about, and we just learned about that in our little entrance to this video, 
was we talk about horizontal. Horizontal lines. We talk about vertical lines. And we talk about diagonal lines. A lot of times we play a game where kids put their arms straight out for horizontal, put their hands up and down for vertical, and they tip their bodies like a tip teapot for diagonal. And then sometimes we lay on this floor for horizontal. We jump up with our hands above our heads for vertical. And then again, the diagonal teapot, we kind of play those kind of games to get some movement involved in our activities too. After we know the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal pretty well, we start talking about other kinds of lines. And we talk about how some lines can be short. And we talk about how some lines can be long. And we talk about lots of different lines. If a line is thick, and sometimes we kind of say it looks a little like a rectangle because it's just a thickened line. We talk a lot about lines being very thin. We talk about lines being irregular. Oops, that was really hard to see. Let's redo that. And where do we see those kind of lines? Sometimes in graphing. The regular lines would just be the regular things that we're talking about. And then, of course, we talked already about, we're going to get some of these out. We already talked about spirals. We talked about wavy. about zigzag. One day when I was doing this, one of my students said, you know, zigzag, the lines of a zigzag kind of look like Z's. I said, that is exactly right. Nice thinking. We can also talk about, as you get older, that we talk also about diagonal mean, also means oblique. So if it's a diagonal line, it is also known as oblique. So anything that is not completely horizontal or vertical, anywhere in between all of those areas can be oblique. And then we start talking about radial designs. And a radial is just showing that those lines kind of radiate from a center point. And we also talk about how those radials can continue like this. And we say that we find these in nature. Can anyone think about where we would find those in nature? Let's think about if we cut open a lemon or an orange or a lime and those radial lines that we see in nature. I had a student once tell me that radial lines occur in suns. And I said that if you look at the real sun, it kind of looks like solar flares coming off of it. It doesn't actually look like this, but sometimes when we're younger, we draw suns like this because that is a representation of a sun. Another thing that we can talk about in lines 
is a dotted line. And we use those for a lot of things. Maybe we could follow a path using a dotted line or cut on a dotted line. We talk about broken lines. Sometimes those are also sometimes used for tracing or cutting. And sometimes that broken line is also called a dash line. And then in art and in other places, we also talk about a line that combines a lot of lines together. And we talk about a lot with this with clay and with pen and ink and things like that, but we call this kind of line crosshatch. Because when we want to fill in some color to make it a little darker, we can just do that kind of thing to fill in that color. Another type of line we talk about, and all of these truly are related to the things that we learn about in math. So we talk about math a lot in art class. And a couple of the other lines we talk about in drawing are parallel lines. Parallel lines never meet. They just continue on together. And some people have talked about that as far as a highway or something like that. And then we can also, when we talk about parallel, we can talk about perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular lines go in the opposite directions of each other and they can cross sometimes. So another kind of line that we talk about sometimes is a tapered line or an uneven line. So a tapered line might start as a thick line, like we talked about up here, and then it gets thinner as you go. And it could get very thin. So this would be a tapered line. So when you're drawing things or drawing a design, you definitely could do this. And then we can talk also about uneven lines. And when we talk about Greek architecture, we often talk about this. And that kind of line we talk about as a Greek key design in fourth grade architecture. We call this a dentil line. That was in Greek architecture that we discuss when you're in fourth grade. And it is from the word, and the word dental comes from dentil. So if you have finished all of these type of lines, I would like you to go around your house or your neighborhood and snap pictures of things that look like those lines, like right now. I'm looking at my ottoman, and I see horizontal and vertical lines. And if I look at my pillows, I see an irregular lines, but there's still a pattern. And I see curved lines. And on my tractor, I see straight lines. And on that window, I see straight lines, horizontal and vertical. See what kind of lines you can find and we'll talk about it next week. See you later.